Hi, I'm Nick Coveney. I just chaired the session on 21st century storytelling uh, down in the uh, cinema space here at Expo North. And I've been joined by Adam G, uh, Nick Fortuna and Paul McFadden. Uh, and we're just going to talk a little bit about some of the themes that we covered um, earlier on. So, Adam, yes. what would you <laughs> say is important for storytellers in the 21st century? I think to turn it into something that's a two-way um, experience. It's no longer about broadcasting and just sort of saying, here's my stuff, watch it, read it, listen to it. But um, it becomes part of a, a conversation and an exchange. Yeah. Um, Nick, what's, what's been your, your favorite memory of Expo North so far? I think it's been fascinating to be surrounded by people from different media and to have an intersection of media ranging from music to gaming to fashion to film because that is an inspiring space that allows everybody who's in that space to create new ways. So hearing the questions of people about story from such diverse backgrounds leads me to challenge my thinking in interesting ways. Paul, what would you say is that the number one reason why people have to come to Expo North next year? Just to keep up to date with all the new technologies and methods of storytelling and music, gaming, all the different industries. So earlier on we were discussing the way uh, in which artificial intelligence uh, might begin to impact on storytellers. Nick, I know you had uh, a lot of thoughts uh, on that particular issue. Well, uh, artificial intelligence is an interesting space right now because it's very capable of doing very narrow things and very incapable of doing very deep things. And storytelling I would consider a very deep thing. So. Thinking that AI is going to write story at this point in history is not really imaginable. But seeing that AI can help with certain kinds of formulaic things like research or perhaps editing or incubation of ideas, right? That the AI can spit out at me things that I could look at as a creator and then make use of, that's a use of AI that I think is coming in the very near future. Adam, yeah. um, earlier on you featured um, the fantastic Don't Stop the Music. Um, Multi-platform multi yeah. uh, experience. How do you go about creating a transmedia multi-platform uh, experience like that? I think you need to zoom in on a story that actually benefits from crossing different platforms. So in particular using tele, uh, TV to evoke emotion, um, which is what it's really good at, but it's not very good at explaining things in detail. Um, so. Uh, that dimension from the TV, perhaps for interactive media, enable people to do stuff about the emotion that they're feeling and to get involved and to act on it. Um, doing stuff in real life, you know, it's very, you can do all sorts of things in real life, so that's a very important dimension of multi platform that we forget about the real life one. But anyway, something that will benefit from all those different facets and where they can come together to become more than the sum of the parts. Paul, I know that um, what you do at the, the social, the, the BBC channel, is um, empowering young people to share their stories, become um, more effective, more powerful storytellers. Mm -hmm. How do you go about finding um, the young people that you feature? Uh, well, basically, we just look across the normal social media platforms, find people that are doing things already, and find out if we can help them to improve their skills in different areas. And a lot of the time, people majority of the people will come to us and say I've got an idea. The whole core of the social is to help people make their ideas reality so they're like you know I've got this great idea for a thing but I've got no idea how to start. You know so we're like all about helping them well you just use you can use your phone this is how you would start writing a script this is how you would think about shots and stuff like that so yeah they come to us and we go out and sometimes we'll do outreach events as well and just invite people to come and chat to us basically. If you had a number one tip for modern storytellers what would it be? Start doing it. Like so many people come and they're like, well, I've got a great idea, and you're like, well, have you tried? Like even filming anything or doing or writing something down, you know, so many people just you just need to get started because it's dead easy now. You have all the technology at your fingertips, and everybody should just be trying to begin. And then it it helps you make your mark because when you go to people who are creating, uh, helping people create content, you can say, well, I've tried this, I've tried this. And if somebody says, I've got a great idea, but I haven't even thought, of it, I haven't tried to do anything, you're just like, well. Get started. Yeah. <laughs> Get started. Yeah. Um, Nick, would your tip be the same? Uh, I, what I would say is that um, the change that's happened in media in the 21st century is that we're no longer medium specific. 
in how we think about storytelling. Instead, we think of stories as things that transcend different media. So as you think about your storytelling, try to disconnect it a bit from the medium that you're going to tell it in and imagine it as a story world. Because that gives you the possibility of imagining the use cases and other technologies that could make your story more powerful and allowing you to find maybe the easiest route in. Brilliant. And um, Adam? I would say just be clear about what you want to say and who you want to say it to. So all the sort of old meat and two veg of the thing is still very important. You need to know who your target audience is and how best to speak to them. But also just have a clear notion of what you're actually trying to say through whatever the story is. Um, thank you for having us at Expo North. We've had a great time. Thank you. Thank you.